Canada is a nation that is very welcoming of immigrants. What were your expectations about Toronto before you landed? New York with CN Tower. And do you think you're fully integrated now? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Daria, and you're in the right place if you would like to know how Canadian newcomers settle down, find jobs, and start a new life in Canada. While in Ontario, you now can meet up with a thick circle of up to 10 friends without social distancing. I decided to do this interview with someone who I spent lockdown with, my husband Hushman. Hi, Hushman. Hi. Originally from Iran, Hushman had spent seven years studying in New York and he has a PhD in computer science from Columbia University. What were your expectations about Toronto before you landed? I'm afraid I didn't form a big picture about what to expect in Toronto, but at the time I thought of it as another New York with CN Tower. I thought the opportunities would be the same, uh, the culture more or less is the same, and I would, it would be um, uh, very seamless for me to just adapt and just move there. What was your first impression of Toronto? I feel like uh, Canadians are a little bit more laid back and um, their jobs are more of a nine to five. And this is, has nothing to do with passing judgment. And it's just, um, I'm saying that um, there are some differences uh, versus I felt like um, uh, Americans, especially in New York, everyone is in, uh, in a rush all the time and you feel this uh, uh, heavy atmosphere of stress. Um, and beside that, I, I felt like um, uh, in, in New York, in Northeast, people are a little bit more upfront. And uh, it's not necessarily about just uh, um, not being nice, but they do away with pleasantries. So you don't like pleasantries? Sure, we, we all do like some niceties in our social interactions and some pleasantries, but um, I really like to be upfront or I like people to be upfront with me, so to speak, more sincere. What kind of job were you looking for? I was, I was mainly looking for uh, engineering roles and to be exact, uh, data science and machine learning, which they fall under the same umbrella, but slightly uh, different in terms of responsibilities. How long did it take you to get a job? Well, I kind of actively started looking in the um, um, beginning of summer and it took a good eight, nine months before I finally got an offer. Is it because you didn't actively look for jobs or because it was that hard? On and off, I was looking uh, for jobs, but since I was simultaneously working on my PhD dissertation, uh, sometimes uh, I had to uh, slack when it came to job search and applications. And the other thing would be, I feel like um, there are long periods of radio silence in hiring process here. When you reach out to recruiters or you're mid process in uh, contact and in conversation with companies, it takes much longer for them to get back to you with responses. Uh, and this is not necessarily the final answer. It's just uh, all the stages that you have to go through. I felt like in, in US, uh, the process was much faster and the recruiters especially were more prompt when it came to replying to you. And why do you think uh, this is the case with the recruiters here? It's hard for me to say. I actually haven't uh, done much research. Uh, I, d I wonder if it's because of the labor laws here preventing uh, companies to be transparent when it comes to decision making. What salary did you hope for when you came here? Well, I'm coming, I was coming from US and uh, people in our field tend to do really well um, when it comes to salary. I did some research and I realized I should lower my expectations basically. And I was talking to companies and I got a feeling of how much they're willing to pay. So to sum up the answer, I, I had to uh, uh, lower my expectations when it comes to salary. And this is a well-known fact. So you are earning below what you expected? Yeah, at least in the beginning, I, I thought maybe uh, I would earn more than I uh, realized afterwards is the uh, average salary. 
I'm not gonna ask you how much exactly you paid on taxes last year, but what do you think you could have bought with the money you spent on taxes? Um, not that I'm thinking of buying a single item with uh, uh, that much money, but I would say you could uh, get a decent car. How much in rent do you pay for your apartment? Uh, about 2,000. 2,000 Canadian dollars per month. That's correct. And how much do you spend on groceries? Um, for us, a household of two, um, I'd say six to eight hundred a month. How secure do you think your job is? Uh, well, thankfully, our company is doing well and um, my job has not been affected. Um, but of course, I cannot predict the future. What are the job opportunities for PhD students in computer science here? I would say um, as um, a um, student of computer science, uh, with or without graduate degree, uh, there are still plenty of opportunities here. It does not um, compare to US, of course, because many of the companies have their headquarters there. There are simply just more roles to fill. Um, but um, it might be a little bit harder to find jobs and like uh, get a um, strong foothold, but Ultimately, maybe with a little bit more work, you could end up getting the same type of jobs that you would get in the US. You've got some uh, US work experience. How does it compare to your work experience here? Well, my um, US work experience is, is limited. Uh, I uh, was a graduate student for a long period of time. I was a research assistant. Uh, um, I ended up uh, doing software engineering as well as research as well. Um, but I, I mentioned before that I feel like in Canada things are a little bit more laid back. Uh, my feeling is here um, uh, nothing to do with the uh, uh, integrity or like quality of um, the job being done, but um, it's a more of a nine to five type of thing. At least that, that's, that's my feeling compared to uh, US. And of course, this might be because I have a limited uh, perspective. There is a vibrant culture of meetups in New York. Is it the same thing here in Toronto? I would say to some extent, yes. I mean, um, thankfully, there are like events where, where brilliant, brilliant uh, young people come together, share ideas. Um, however, there is uh, one thing that I've noticed, which is um, I don't find it uh, ideal that uh, sponsors take a good share of the time of these events. And that wasn't necessarily the case uh, in uh, events back in US. Um, so I feel like um, uh, instead of um, um, just simply um, uh, generously undertaking some of the events and getting the recognition, they try to um, uh, dominate the stage, which they Honestly, they shouldn't. Like the attention should go to the to the subject of the events, to the speakers, uh, to people to come together and just share their ideas. Some of your peers have come or are in the process of coming to Canada. What is the job search experience like? Well, I've heard um, frustrating stories from some friends. Um, uh, for example, one of them uh, moved to Canada with a job offer. Um, and some expectations, but it turned out that uh, the company he had joined had dismantled the um, department that he was supposed to join without notifying him. And he ended up like wasting some time and money and looking for jobs again and moving to another location in Toronto. In the media, there is this common narrative of Canada's tech firms capitalizing on immigration anxiety in the age of Trump. How real do you think this belief is? Well, to some extent, that's what's been happening. Um, uh, people are fearful of uh, what's going to happen and what the future holds for them. So, and they feel like they can find stability in Canada. So they're um, very seriously contemplating moving here. And of course, a lot of talented uh, employees and engineers are going to are going to uh, move here or are in the process of uh, moving here. I'm a little bit fearful that um, uh, this, with this influx of uh, skilled uh, workforce, uh, Canadian companies are not prepared. And uh, they're going to um, have a situation where they're going like, to see a lot of great candidates, which they're not going to be able to like, find placement for. And that's going to create 
maybe some frustration. As an AI specialist, do you think Canada is a hot spot for AI? Well, in some sense, of course it is. Um, Canada has many talented uh, and top-notch uh, research scientists and researchers when it comes to the field. Um, I mean, of course, one of the fathers of deep learning, Jeff Rinton, is uh, in Toronto. But um, when it comes to capitalizing on um, uh, AI in industry, I feel like uh, Canada lags behind US. Why do you think so? Oh, well, uh, of course, uh, looking at the portfolio of uh, companies, startups, um, it, it's less clear to me that uh, uh, AI is being, uh, and, and the power of AI is being tapped into and all its potential being uh, taken advantage of. Companies are trying to um, kind of uh, come up to speed with uh, the excitement about the field. I would say it's hard to compete with uh, the landscape of uh, AI startups and AI companies in the US. Would you say that there is more tech talent than companies that can hire this uh, highly specialized tech talent in Toronto? It's hard to say because after all, uh, anything that I would tell you would be anecdotal. I feel like that is the case. Um, um, roles and, and um, job opportunities are, are much less, I, I feel like, for um, uh, people in our field uh, compared to um, all the uh, opportunities that are available in the US. People probably go through longer processes to be able to finally land a job. And ultimately those jobs might not be um, uh, on par with uh, the best roles that they could find in in US when it comes to both salary or the type of work that they might be doing. In Canadian media, Toronto is often referred to as a new Silicon Valley. From your perspective, how fair do you think this comparison is? Well, to some extent, Canada is a hotspot for innovation already. Like they have a good portfolio of companies and startups that um, are uh, gaining success, getting traction. However, uh, I feel like um, in some areas, um, uh, they have some disadvantages. For example, the workforce that we have been talking about. Um, many talented uh, uh, employees and, and uh, engineers end up going to US simply uh, on the ground that they are paid uh, far better. I don't think based on statistics, um, the emerging uh, startups or uh, the ecosystem um, is comparable to uh, not only Silicon Valley, but even like a place like New York. You mentioned based on statistics, uh, do you have any data? To uh, I'm afraid not. I'm just speaking on like, um, uh, let's say for example, unicorn uh, um, uh, companies. Um, and of course we have to adjust for the population of the nations. I mean, after all, uh, US has 10 times the population of Canada. Um, but um, in, in any, any way, um, the successful start startups and companies that are emerging from US are far more than those in Canada. I feel like uh, Canadian investors are a bit more conservative. This might have to do with uh, banking and finance laws in Canada versus uh, US. And I feel like in US, these laws are a little bit lax and um, investors are bolder when it comes to giving money to startups. You joined a corporation. Why didn't you join a startup? It's hard to tell. I wasn't necessarily looking for like startup versus corporation. Uh, for one thing, I actually wanted to get some uh, decent engineering experience. And I cared about like the type of work that I'm doing. And I, I found a role and a team that uh, would allow me to basically fulfill the type of um, expectations that I wanted from my job. When it comes to startups, however, I felt uh, like uh, my job security wouldn't, have, uh, wouldn't be as much as joining a corporation. So that's, I would say, tilted uh, my decision more toward joining a corporation. Have you ever experienced anti-immigrant sentiment in Canada? Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I've experienced any anti-immigrant sentiments. Uh, and I'm very thankful for this opportunity that I got to come here. I feel like uh, as a nation, Canada is very welcoming towards immigrants.
One thing that uh, might be somewhat relevant is I feel like, um, when it, especially when it comes to professional life and um, job search, Canadian companies tend to um, credit Canadian citizens uh, more. And uh, um, I feel like uh, foreigners and immigrants uh, have a harder time getting through and making connections and finding jobs. I kind of understand the necessity for Canada to prioritize to some extent people who go through uh, the public education, educational system and have to start uh, contributing to society and like find jobs. But on the other hand, when uh, Canada is accepting immigrants, especially like as a skilled worker, it's a bit heartbreaking that suddenly like the experiences that those people uh, bring with them are um, is seen as um, less desirable than that of uh, people who've uh, acquired experience within Canada. Canadian employers often require something called Canadian experience. What do you think they refer to? Um, I feel like the Canadian experience is, uh, mostly has to do with uh, cultural grounds. Um, I don't see why work experience in this country would necessarily and automatically be better than um, experience from outside, whether it's uh, even if, like, even if it's exactly within the same field and with the same professional standards. If I had to guess, I would say maybe in their um, eyes, um, it uh, equates better ability to uh, integrate yourself into the professional uh, uh, landscape or like in the work. Uh, setting. Talking about integration, do you think you're fully integrated now? Well, I mean, I lived in the US for a decade, and I, the, about a decade, and then I moved to Canada. I feel like the countries are very similar when it comes to cultural aspect, aspects. And um, um, I would say that I have been integrated in, into the society. Why do you think newcomers struggle to find employment? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, I feel like um, as I mentioned before briefly, uh, Canadian employers and companies uh, maybe uh, give too, uh, too much value to uh, Canadian work experience uh, when it comes to comparing uh, candidates. Um, and another thing which is probably even more important is having connections and knowing people uh, uh, within companies or with employers. And uh, of course, for uh, foreigners and immigrants coming into the country, it's much more difficult to establish a network and uh, try to uh, get through all the barriers and, and uh, finally be able to get a job. After all, you find uh, jobs in many cases by knowing people um, uh, in the field or just like simply within the company. All right, let's talk about express entry process. How long did it take you to get your PR? Well, from the, the moment that I started uh, the process, um, doing the test and uh, gathering the documents, up to uh, the moment that I received my immigrant visa uh, from Canada Immigration took uh, about six months, which was surprisingly below average processing time. Have you ever seeked advice from immigration consultants and would you recommend using their services? Uh, not at all. I just um, found it uh, straightforward to follow the instructions um, uh, on the website. Uh, and more or less, um, um, it was uh, self-explanatory, the process. I don't see why it would be necessary. How has your neighborhood changed due to coronavirus restrictions? One thing that is obvious is uh, everyone being on, on edge, uh, being very concerned, uh, everyone using masks, uh, stores uh, uh, following strict uh, rules, which actually is a great thing. Um, I feel like um, people are coming out less often. Have you donated to international or local organizations fighting COVID-19? Uh, I'm afraid not to a great extent, but um, to Doctors Without Borders and uh, some local food banks, but I definitely should ramp up the donations that I make to these organizations. U.S. has a notoriously bad medical system. How do you find the medical system here in Canada? Uh, no, that's that's true, and it uh, hits hits uh, close uh, close to home because um, um, 
when I was uh, in uh, US, um, um, I knew people who uh, basically would avoid like getting any insurance because they couldn't aff afford it and they had to gamble with their health uh, and risk their health. Um, uh, here, I find it um, um, very dignified that we, we all have access to healthcare. I'm very happy with the process um, and I uh, feel like it's a wonderful uh, thing that Canada has to offer. And unfortunately, it's a shame that um, uh, U.S. to this day um, cannot do this. What percent of your friends were born in Canada? So far, zero. Uh, I've been here for about like a year and a half, and uh, I still have not made like any friends. I have some colleagues, of course, who are Canadian born. Um, I don't know if that necessarily counts, but I don't have any friends um, who are Canadian born yet. Is it because of cultural differences? Uh, it's hard for me to say. I mean, after all, my experience is limited. I'm kind of a uh, introvert as well. Um, so I tend to find friends harder. And um, it very well could be the case that th there might be some like cultural aspects when it comes to uh, making friends. Although like I had many American friends who, in the US, so maybe I just like need more time. Uh, it's hard for me to tell. All right, now about your spare time. How do you spend your weekends? Um, a wide uh, range of things, actually. Um, in terms of outdoor stuff, activity, uh, biking, I go hiking uh, quite a lot, mini hikes in the, in the city trails. Um, I uh, visit friends from time to time, uh, especially we play board games uh, quite often. Um, and um, I would have, of course, would have loved to go to uh, uh, concerts, uh, performances, but unfortunately, because of the uh, COVID uh, restrictions, um, there, there's no such opportunity, at least at the moment. What has been your most positive experience here in Toronto so far? Um, I have to say, um, within the first week that I uh, came uh, and I got my landed immigrant status, I reunited with an old uh, friend from uh, primary school. It was really wonderful. Tell me about Toronto. What is a typical thing to see on Toronto streets? One thing I'm really tempted to say is um, I've noticed uh, people are overexcited to uh, ride their convertibles in uh, summer. <laughs> I feel like because maybe the winter is way too harsh. Um, yeah, but it's a common sight. At least I noticed a lot of like convertibles during summer, even like when the weather is not necessarily the best for it. Are you happy with your decision to come to Canada? Uh, absolutely, yeah. I think it was the right uh, choice for me um, to come to here. And I'm very grateful to, to, to Canada as a nation to accept me as an immigrant. After the executive order that we talked about, um, life was uh, becoming a little bit uh, more difficult. It was difficult not to see my family and um, uh, among other things. How did the executive order affect you personally? Well, unfortunately, um, at that time, uh, my dad uh, had uh, uh, cancer and um, I never had the opportunity of uh, visiting him or for him to visit me in the US because of fear of losing my, my visa and like not being able to um, finish my graduate program. And unfortunately, my dad passed away in the same year. And I feel like if it wasn't for the executive order, perhaps I could have seen him at least one last time. It seems that you are thankful to Canada for accepting you. How would you like to give back to the community? One thing that it, I, I personally think is invaluable is volunteering uh, and, and of all sort. I personally would love to um, give some of my time mentoring uh, and, and teaching uh, students, uh, maybe like in STEM subjects. And I, I think like um, I would find it very fulfilling. And um, as soon as uh, the COVID restrictions are lifted, uh, I, hope, I hope to spend some time volunteering in, in, in this area. What would be your advice for people in your field who are planning to immigrate to Canada? Um, for those who are coming from U.S., I, I can say that um, 
you have to just like adjust your expectations, do your research and uh, realize that um, um, there's going to be some trade-offs uh, in your uh, professional and uh, personal uh, life. And uh, basically, um, in terms of like salary, uh, difficulty finding opportunities, you might find this a little bit more difficult in uh, Canada. And for those uh, coming from Iran, I highly recommend that uh, they would uh, actively um, try to establish a professional network and uh, connect to peers um, uh, in hopes of propelling them in their career. Kushman, thank you so much for sharing your experience. My pleasure. Thank you for watching and please let me know in the comments if you would like to watch more chats with Canadian newcomers. Stay safe.